Hello, I'm Amateur Pro Home Chef Nathaniel Levinson, and today we'll be taking a close look at glucosinolates. Glucosinolates. We talked about them back in our Brussels sprouts episode. Because glucosinolates are compounds that are most commonly found in the brassica family of vegetables, which is Brussels sprouts, cabbages, and things like that. But what do glucosinolates actually do? How do they function? Well, we're going to take a little bit closer look at that. So it's primarily thought to be a self-defense mechanism, like a lot of these things are, like capsaicin in peppers. Basically what happens is when the plant feels like it's under attack, these glucosinolates get broken down by an enzyme called which takes your lovely compound here, which is a sugar attached to a couple other things, and converts it to a thiocyanate. And these things are unpleasant. So this is what gives you that sort of bitter edge and that nasty smell that you get from those types of plants. Now this, this reaction is promoted at low heat. So low temperature cooking, which boiling water is considered a low temperature process, a low temperature process promotes this reaction, which is why when you boil cabbage, when you boil Brussels sprouts, you tend to get more of those nasty sulfurous tastes, a little more of the acrid tastes. But high heat compounds helps to kind of bypass this, breaks it down, this goes away, and that's when you get that nice sweetness that we like in those plants. If you're ever cooking something for the Brassica family, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, just remember, high heat methods, good. Low heat methods, bad. Glucosinolates, nasty. Till next time, I'm your boy, amateur pro home chef, Nathaniel Levinson. Glucosinolates.